The guard link on machine interface can bring safety inputs and diagnostic information into a guard logics. 5380 or 5580 safety programmable controller. The subject of today's video is programming guard logics to use the data sent and received by the 432ES IG3 guard link interface. This video provides a guided tour of a guard logics program that uses the three channels of the guard link interface to monitor a total of nine guard link nodes. In previous videos, the 432ES IG3 guard link interface and taps were configured in the guard logics I.O. configuration. Let's verify that the input RPI has been set to provide the safety task fresh data each scan. In the I.O. configuration, double click the 432ES IG3. Go to the safety menu. The request packet interval is set to 10 milliseconds. The periodic safety task is configured to run every 20 milliseconds, as shown by the value in the brackets next to the safety task. The RPI and safety task period are coordinated to provide fresh data each scan of the safety task. Let's look at how the safety data is used in the GuardLogix safety task. Following the guidance of safety standards, the safety program has been divided into routines for input, logic, and output. The main routine calls all other routines in the order displayed. Double clicking on the I00 mapped tags routine, the mapped tags routine manages the safety reset coming from the standard task using safety tag mapping. Double clicking on I01 guard link routine, this routine converts the guard link safety inputs into device summary bits for the machine. Rung 0 uses the channel zero status safety input to declare e-stop OK. Rung one uses the channel one status safety input to declare locking guard doors are closed and locked. Rung two uses the channel two status safety input to declare non-locking guard doors are closed. The channel status are the only safety rated inputs provided by the guard link interface. Some safety system designs require reacting differently to different types of inputs. For example, if all power is required to be shut down on an emergency stop, but only motion power is required to be shut down during a guard door open, then e-stops would need to be on a guard link channel separate from guard doors. The example program separates e-stops, locking guard doors, and non-locking guard doors. Double-clicking on L10 logic routine, rung 0 and 1 manage the reset. Rung 2 creates a safety input summary. Rung 3 is the main safety run permissive. Double-clicking on O20 contactor routine, rung 0 has a configurable redundant output instruction that controls a pair of safety contactors. The actuate signal for the C route is the safety run permissive from the logic routine. To summarize the safety logic, guard link channel inputs are combined in the safety input summary. Reset enables the safety run permissive, which energizes two safety contactors. The loss of any guard link channel will de-energize the contactors. Before moving to the standard logic, let's review the standard node communication requested packet interval. Information from the guard link nodes is handled by a standard input-output connection. The requested packet interval for every node on every channel of a guard link interface module is the same. Since this information is not safety critical, the application was left at the 100 millisecond default setting. The standard task logic has been divided into basic functions by routine. C00 safety map tags routine loads the HMI reset bit into the standard to safety tag mapping array. We saw where the tag entered the safety task in the safety routine I00 mapped tags. The C01 machine control is basic start stop logic that makes a simulated motor spin. Double clicking on C02 guard link unlock routine, the locking guard doors can be unlocked individually using the channel node H unlock bits. 
rung 0 and 1 provide the capability to unlock and lock all locking guard doors. Rungs 2 through 6, the standard output for guard link has both a lock and an unlock signal. Typical programming would drive the lock and the unlock as inverted signals. To satisfy guard link, there must be a delay between the removal of the lock signal and energizing the unlock signal. There must also be a delay when locking. A simple add-on instruction was developed to inject a configurable timer preset between the lock and unlock outputs. To see the logic, right-click on the AOI dot 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 button and select Open Instruction Logic. The add-on instruction consists of two timers that separate the lock and unlock signals. Close the AOI logic. There is an AOI guard link unlock for each locking guard door. Guard link unlock rung 7. The guard link enabled Series B 440GMZ guard door detects when it has been forced open, either with the escape release or an external device. To recover from a lock detection fault, the device is reset, unlocked, then locked. Double clicking on C04 guard link reset routine, HMI input bits control each guard link node reset output. The 440G MZ guard link enabled guard door on channel 1, node 4, is also reset after an escape release. Double clicking on C10 guard link HMI routine, rung 0 through 8 are guard link node multi state indicators indicating run ready, tripped, unlocked, or faulted. The multi state indicator logic could be made into an add on instruction, but currently left open for ease of discussion. Rungs 9 through 11 are broken trunk indication to the HMI. Rung 12 when a locked guard door is commanded to unlock, the device trip address returns a negative 3. The logic in rung 12 provides the node where the unlock command was received for display on the HMI. The D02 guard link alarm routine contains alarm digital instructions configured to provide alarming for the safety system. Now that the guard link interface module has been configured, and the GuardLink system programming is complete, we are ready for a system demonstration. The system demonstration is a topic for another video. Thanks for watching, and hey, let's be careful out there.